Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will show you how to make one of the steel vault replacement batteries. I do genuinely love their batteries, but there's a problem. These batteries cost like a fortune in Hong Kong. One of these costs like 700 Hong Kong dollars, so that's roughly equivalent to 70 quid, 65, 70 quid. So that's the case of a A10 power. Well, it's a fake, it's not a genuine default. What I'll be using is these 21700 5000 milliamp lithium ion cells. One of these A10 power battery costs around 200 quid. What, spending 200 quid on a battery? I might as well spend it on a tool, you know what I mean? Let's get started, shall we? So let's open it. Slightly filmed, I will say. But, I'm not going to chuck it around, so I think that will do. So as I said, I'll be using 10 of these... 21700 cells. There you go. Ten of them. Yep. Thank the Lord I can count. So one thing great about these um replacement case is that there's actually positive and negative notations so you know how it goes. So to get ten amp hour, we have to connect two of them in parallel. So we have to group each of them in a pair first before connecting them in series. Once they're connected, the end-to-end -end voltage should be around 18.5 to 21 volt. Hence, they will cause them a 20 volt max batteries. Because the batteries don't stay at 20 volt, once they're charged, their voltage decreases and remains at 18 volt for a longer period. Hence, some of them cause them 18, some of them cause them 20. And one thing to mention about, don't solder batteries. It's really risky. There are loads of news about lithium ion battery exploding and getting on fire. The reason is lithium batteries are not good at dealing with heat. Once you put a large amount of heat through, it's going to damage the lithium layers. And what's going to happen? They're going to expand. And by the time it expand, it's probably going to erupt and explode. So please don't solder them. If you really want to make your own battery, get a spot welder. It costs only like 18, 20 quid. Or the batteries part, lithium, costs like 30 to 40. So it's still way less than 100 quid. So personally, I think it's definitely worth it. But I can't say much at the moment because I still need to run some tests, don't I? Because I made one of these replacement batteries before. And well, it lasted. It lasted till now, been like a year. So make sure all batteries are charged before doing anything. That's really important. It fluctuates between 3.4, 3.7. So because that's that is not fully charged yet, that's why. So pop the batteries in the case first. So as you see, that's positive, negative, positive, negative, and positive. As I said, I'll be using this um, spot welder. It's cordless. It's literally like a power bank. It's a massive power bank, but it's a spot welder. So apparently, it's not an ad, but because I pay this myself. Um, so, this spot welder, particularly, going to pump up to 650 amp. So, I think that sounds like a fair amount. Because we're only doing battery. That's the strength. I normally use four bars for batteries. Yeah, so I'll turn it off for now. To link the batteries together, I'll be using the nickel coated steel. So it comes in like this. Be really careful, it's really sharp. I cut myself multiple times already. That's why I'm wearing gloves this time. I normally don't, and it's stupid. So as I said, we're going to link them all into, into pairs first. So horizontal currently, in your view, it'll be horizontally, yeah? So I'll cut them into size. There you go. Just like that. And it's been spot welded. You can see the four spots on it. And that's how you do it. And make sure the batteries line up straight. 
Same thing. Just like that. Voila, just like that, and they're tapped in pairs. So we're going to link up the batteries in series per group. So in theory I should get, because they're not charged, I should get 17, 18-ish volt. There, so it's 17-ish. Now the battery pack is roughly there. What we now need to do, pop this in. Uh, so it says B plus and B minus. So it would be the red and black. So that goes to the battery indicator, which looks like this. So let's flip it over. So you can see it says P plus and P minus. On here it says B plus and B minus. So B plus go to P plus and B minus go to P minus. What we need to do next is plan how the main negative and the main positive goes to here. Two options. One is to use normal wires to solder it on but I don't like it it doesn't look great so what I'm going to do instead is to use what we have been using earlier on cut roughly 15 centimeter for positive and roughly 10 centimeter so what you could have done actually is to leave the first two empty but I totally forgot about that so I'm just going to go over it it's not a big deal so it's alright So we're going to bend it down like that and turn it 90 degrees. So it goes in nicely. Like that. Pop this back on. So what I will do is to remove that. that was meant to be for the cable holder, but we're not going to use it, so I'm going to remove it. Go slowly, don't damage anything else. Just like that. So now, that will go straight onto the terminal. So that's the positive end, and we will solder that end instead of soldering the battery. But as you see, these are all pure metal, so we're going to cover it with some heat shrink tubing. So unfold it. Let's see if we have any red. We need black. And we need red. That's red. There you go. That's one red. I will link all the tools, well, the tools that I really enjoy using, in the link in the description. So as you can see, what I've done, pop the heat shrink tubing through, and just use a heat gun. I'm just using this DeWalt heat gun. You can use a torch or anything. So 
So just follow the bends we did earlier on. And that so land straight onto the terminal. You can always use a screwdriver to help you guide it in place. Same thing here, overlap it. Same as earlier on. Bend the tip down and guide it in place. So it goes like that. And what you do, same thing. Hit shrink tubing. So what you do now, you can start soldering. So just heat onto the metal tab and let the solder work its way through. Just like that. And same on the other side. Just like that. And let's start soldering these wires. I'll put a diagram on the screen so you know which goes where. So what you do, you put a tab of solder onto the nickel plate just like that Just a tiny dab of solder is more than enough. So it's low on battery, obviously. So cut off any excess. So you see how that's sticking out a lot. Just cut it off with a side cutter. That will do. And as sharp ends, I normally cut it off. The battery indicators actually goes there, so the, where the knockout is. We actually have to slide this underneath. So you see the wires comes to the front, it goes underneath the board, just like that. Now that's right, now the battery indicators goes along the front, so the battery goes in like this. There's a slot for the indicator panel, it comes with like a pack of accessories, so that's the screw, the indicating plate and so on. I quite like the sticker, it looks quite genuine, if it makes sense. Not trying to copy anything the what does. So just place this really careful. And make sure it lines up so it looks neat. Just like that. It sticks them in front. And pop it into the front slot. Don't lose fourth the screw. The spring goes onto right there. Just like that. And then for the cover, the spring lines up with this. And make sure this slightly angled up like that when you push it in. 
it's because it glides into the slots. It's slightly fiddly. Just put the screws in. Is a is a T15 screw. So just tighten it with a T15 screwdriver. Make sure the light still comes on because sometimes it'll slip out of place. Thanks for watching, give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification to check out our upcoming videos. Until then, have a great day. As always, let's be creative.